Gettysburg Address by Michael Tambori, and this is Michael's second year for uh, his uh, Gettysburg Address, and he did excellent jobs last year, and he's a selected, he's a grandson of a selected uh, clown suit. Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, November 19, 1863. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and decades the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated far above our poor power to add or detect. The world will little no, no longer remember what we say here, but we can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the greatest tax remaining before us. And when these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. Now we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have done in vain, but this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Congratulations, Michael. His mother and father should be very proud of him today. His grandfather should be very proud of him in the second year. He's an excellent job. Thank you. <laughs> now we will have a selection by the team to ask the marching band. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you, when failing hand we throw, 
the church be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith and must he die, we shall not sleep, but happy death and thunder sleeps. Thank you, Damien. That was very good, and I'm sure your parents are here today, and I'm very proud of you also. Uh, now we have a selection by the Claremont Highlanders.
Brown Creek Ken is our oldest, uh, as far as I know, our oldest living uh, veteran here in the town of Brookfield, and he's our Grand Marshal this year. Thank you all for being here for our services at the cemetery this morning, and now we're going to head back up to the Soldiers' Monument at the Town Common. and welcome to Brookfield's 2017 Memorial Sur Service and Recognition. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Reverend John Condon from the Brookfield Congregational Church to join us in prayer. May I invite you to join me in prayer. To the mercy of Almighty God, we commend the fallen citizens of our land, our country, our community, our families. From their devotion and sacrifice, we have received equality, justice, liberty. As our Lord said, greater love has no one than this, that one lay down one's life for his friends, his family, his nation. May we on behalf of all veterans but most especially veterans who are disabled lay down some of our time, energy, resources. They seek not from us assistance, but understanding, not from us our service, but our appreciation of their service, not our desire to seize more for ourselves, but our willingness, like them, to sacrifice for the well-being of our land. We commend them to God's gracious mercy and everlasting keeping. Amen. Thank you, John. We will now hear from the Quibog Highlanders a selection. Gettysburg Address. Abraham Lincoln, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, November 19, 1863. 
Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceiving liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow its ground. The brave men living in death and struggle here have consecrated far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but they can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here have resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and the garment of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. And now we have a selection from the Tantasqua High School Band. Uh, I'd like to introduce Jackson Landine in a recitation of In Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields by Lieutenant Colonel John McCray, medical doctor, 1872 to 1918, Canadian Army. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row and row that mark our place in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Again, we'll hear another selection from the Quaybrook Highlanders.
This is a time when we salute the fallen. From the Revolutionary War to today, and I read, Virginia D. Brennan, Army, Vietnam. John McDougall, Navy, World War II. Lorenzo Forge, Marines, World War II. Richard Finney, Army National Guard. Robert Woodbury, Navy. Ronald Olson, Navy. And with that, we'll move to the firing detail. To Ken Grimes, thank you. Again, I want to thank everyone for joining in today's service. Appreciate your time on what could be another kind of Memorial Day. But again, thank you for joining us in here today.